What's going on, moms and dads? Welcome to another episode of the Fade You Podcast. This is episode 158, recording on Wednesday, October 12th, 2022. We are here today to preview NFL Week 6, already a month and a half into the season, which is crazy. My name is Matthew James, and I'm joined by all the dads on the show today. Uh, I'm at MatthewJames78 on Twitter. Let's run through the rest of the dads here. Chris Duke, at HazmatSuit23. Boot off, Chris? Or no, you no, no. boot boot on boot cast on. off. Want me to use get back to walk and put some pressure on that shit. <clears throat> so some pressure on that fucker. <laughs> How's the look? How's it looking? It's okay. The, the, they said the stitches were good and clean, and so you know, we're just a slow process, just like Chris. the contest. Nice and slow, easy does it. If Chris's foot is clean, then we must be really living in a, a topsy turvy, <laughs> upside down world right now. So, all right, Chris, um, glad you could make it, Dad. Sat in some traffic. Fuck that. Yeah, that 55's a bitch, but yeah. uh, we got through. Kind of like Carson Wentz. Like Carson Wentz on the goal line. That's what that traffic yeah. was like. Yeah, looking four and one right in the face, and he said, "Not so fast, bitch." Rest of the dads, Kmart's here at Kmart's underscore angles on Twitter. Kmart off another five and zero. Oh. How's it going, Dad? Uh, feeling a lot more optimistic, you know, going forward. It's just trying to, you know, nibble our way, catch up to you guys eventually. Yeah, it's right on our heels now. Joe's here. Joe's. Joe, I feel like you've been out of town so much. It's good to see you back in back in your spot at Dude, Joe yeah. underscore knows underscore 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 on Twitter. But yeah, glad to glad to have you back. Dude, I know. I'm happy to be home. Uh yeah, it's been like what two or three weeks since I've actually been able to record one of these on a Wednesday, although I've been on the road. But I think I'm gonna be on the road next week and the following two weeks. So this will be the only time you get to see my wonderful office for the next month, probably. Matt, Joe doesn't drink anymore. Did you hear that? I'm just taking a hiatus. I needed a, needed some time off. You try going to fucking four different cities in seven days and then getting drunk every night. And then, you know, sometimes you just got to take a break. There's nothing wrong with that. He quit on us, Matt. <laughs> I'll still drink your ass under the table any day of the week, Chris. And I'll, I'll, uh, I'll outrun you, too. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, not much argument there. And the Bucket Boy is here at Big Nelly Buckets on Twitter. Neil, how's it going? It's doing well. Just trying to figure out week, what is it, week seven here. Feel, it, feels, it feels like a lot of pressure off of 5-0. and oh. Week six, Dad. Week, week six. six. Whatever it is. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Matters a little bit. 5-0 uh, and oh is like... It's so bittersweet because you're like you just killed it, but you're like if you it's all for naught if you fire like a one and four the next week it's like exactly fuck. or another two two and one. Yeah, yeah don't uh, do that's that how this we week. that's how we followed up the last one. Yeah, yeah. So uh, what? Yeah, what does matter is Westgate Super Contest. Quick update here. Dads are in great shape. Uh, we've got myself and Joe and Chris all at seventeen and eight. I think that is. Three and a half, no, four and a half. Four and a half. Behind yep. me, behind that asshole leading the contest at 21, three and one. Fuck that guy. Jesus, Jesus. But yeah, 17 and eight for three of us. And then came our Neil off of two five and O's in the last three weeks, right behind us at 15, nine and one. So everybody is off to a good start through five weeks, five down and still 13 weeks to go. So we got a long, long way till the finish line here, boys. Same order, uh, C Joe, Chris, and I were all tied last week as well. We all went three and two, so we maintain the order. So, Joseph Hamill, you get to go first. Thank you, I appreciate it. And this one, I, I'm actually, I'm, I'm, I might put my foot down and make my partner do this one because it's disgusting. And that would be the Washington Communists. We fired them the last two weeks. They fucked us. I feel like the third time's the charm here. Uh, seventy percent of bets, seventy-five percent of money on the Bears. Free money, Bears home. You know, pick them, play tomorrow, just get a win. 
Let's go, Carson Wentz. Pull your ginger cock piece out, please, for once. God, you just want pain. <laughs> I want I don't it. Know what else to say? I want it so bad in the contest. I already bet it, but it, if weather makes context, contest will be the ginger god that is my partner, Jared. Whether or not we get it in the contest. I, I have like no comment. I'm shocked by that. <laughs> Chris, can you, you? I mean, Chris, no one loves poop more than you and scum. Now, some people who we respect have also been on Washington lately, and that's just been L, L, L. Can you even endorse this one? Yep. Unmute, Chris. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, like Joe said, a lot of bets on bears, and uh, but the line came down and made it pick them in the contest instead of plus one. I know you called freaking me out on Twitter, and he said, well, now that you mention it, we might have to do it again. I don't <laughs> think we will, but uh, I guess I'll chat with him tonight and see if he does want to pull the trigger early. But you got to love the stones on Vanilla Gorilla for wanting to put that in, try to get off to a nice start to week six. For those who don't know what Chris is referring to, uh, check the Twitter at Fade You Sports. A picture of two dead skeletons. Those are Washington betters, just D E D, dead after a couple of just hilarious L's last few weeks. I'm trying to think of an angle here. I know that first year coaches do not do well on Thursdays, and that's a trend that actually does make sense. If you're thinking about what goes into a game plan for a given week, it's hard enough when you're a first year head coach and now your entire rhythm and routine is thrown into chaos by having to play on a short week. We saw it with our boy Hackett last week. Denver took the L on Thursday night. So maybe with Eberflus, that's a thing you could look at. I'd love to find a reason beyond that as far as a handicap goes. I'm kind of curious what happens with this total. How low can it go? 38 in an NFL game? What is this, Iowa? No, it's actually the Army-Navy game. <laughs> <We're at> like 32. <laughs> hey, but dude, yeah, the under is about as square as fucking square can square. 81% of the money, 70% of the bets. So, yeah, free money, supposedly. I don't know if, if you guys knew that, but Vegas actually hands out free money. If you just bet one side that everybody's on, those win every mm -hmm. time. Kind of like the yeah. over on Monday night. This has gone from 39 to or 39 and a half to 39 to 38 and a half to 38. I wonder if we even get below that for the kickoff tomorrow. We shall see. All right. I guess I'm going next. I don't know how to feel about this one. I'm not doing Dallas again. I don't know if anybody wants to talk about that game. I've given out Dallas each of the last two weeks, and they've won both games outright as a dog. But I don't think this is the week to continue on Dallas, even though I my gut tells me that line is still too high. I'm not doing it. I want to talk about the Jets because the Jets are a hard team to look at because a lot of their data is skewed by Joe Flacco starting for, what, three weeks? Did he make three starts, mm -hmm. Flacco? Okay. So you have a very small sample size of what they've looked like as a cohesive offense. Uh, their offensive line got Dwayne Brown back last week, so it's been another group starting up front, and it's hard to even use their game last week because Miami's QB gets knocked out in the first quarter. So – it's not a game. It's not a team that you can use a lot of data to back up. Although I would say their defense has actually been decent. People might argue, okay, look who they've played. They played fucking Skylar Thompson last week. They played Mitch Trubisky and Kenny Pickett in his first action the week before. So it's a really hard team to get a read on. And I just feel like, We've seen a couple weeks now where Green Bay should not be laying a touchdown over teams. People still are pricing Green Bay as a Super Bowl contender, one of the best teams in the league. And I just don't think they are that right now. You let Daniel Jones on one leg. Daniel Jones can run around about as well as Chris can right now. 
and he's got no. And, and if Chris was thrown to us, we're probably a better receiving group than what the Giants trotted out last week. You you can't tell me Def- Green Bay doesn't have some problems defensively. I think it's too many points. J E T S Jets Jets Jets. I like that pick. Um, I think I can't remember. Someone mentioned it to me, and I like that too. Uh, pretty much the same reason you said seven points, just way too many, um, you know, for the Green Bay team. So I'm right there with you. It's probably going to get a little public because nobody really wants to lay a touchdown with Green Bay right now. It's already and public, yeah. I see 55%. That doesn't really bother me. What are you seeing, Joe? 70% of the money, though. That's a On little jets. bit worrisome. Yes. I don't fucking care. I had, you tell me what the Cowboys percentage was last week. So, Right, I mean, yeah. Square bets win too, baby. There's nothing wrong with so, a, a little public dog. I don't think there's any way. I mean, th- this kind of play, though, is never going to be like square because you know the books are going to want Jets outright no matter what. Everyone's going to money line Packers, tease them down to one, whatever. I think it's crazy that I think everywhere it's seven and a half, isn't it? So for the contest to make it seven, just like last week, they shaded the Bears line down to seven at land seven. They shaded the uh, – they didn't give you the hook with the Raiders. They left at seven. They're kind of just daring you to take these faves. And a lot of times right now it's like, fuck it, take the dogs. The dogs are covering, what, 62% or something this year? So – I like it, Matt. I think uh, that line opened nine and a half this week, didn't it? So Sharps fucking took that real quick. That's why the money is 70% probably because the big guys came and hit it. And uh, But Joe Schmoes, if they see it under seven, they'll fucking snap call six and a half because, like you said, Matt, they still think the Packers are the Packers with Devontae and they're good and the Jets are still scum. Uh, it takes weeks to adjust. Uh, I kind of lean that way too. Chris, I was going to ask you how many teasers you personally are going to have Green Bay in. Uh, At least two or three. Uh, I'll figure out the fourth one, though, if I want to put them in that one. (laughs) No one hates teasers more than Chris. Um, So I knew you would love to see the team. I mean, can you imagine if the public gets their teasers blown up on Green Bay two weeks in a row losing? I love seeing Kelly and, like, all these other people just like, fuck teasers suck this week again it's like <laughs> it's like no shit <laughs> now but i do like matt you like we talked about the other day it is it's easier to uh or you like to tease the dog up rather than everyone thinks it's a lock to tease the fave down to the pick em. um like joe said i didn't vegas just they call them teasers and they hand out go to the window it's called teaser you grab it it's free money you get six free points it's pretty awesome all you got to do is you know put two or three together Win them both, you can win at like a seventy percent margin. The the books are going to close down here in a couple of days for the uh, those teasers. <laughs> Dude, yeah, and I'm in this other group chat, and they know this podcast exists, so they'll probably they might get mad at me. But yeah, dude. one of one dude in the fucking he he sends a teaser or he does like five or six teasers every fucking week. It's kind of a new better, and he always teases totals. I'm like, dude, what are you doing? And he like texted too, and he's like, "Oh man, I only lost seventy five bucks last week." I'm like, "Dude, he, he actually went five and zero ATS straight up. He gave five and went five and zero. How the fuck do you still lose all that income? And it's because of these fucking teasers." And I was like, "Dude, there's a reason pro betters don't bet or don't tease totals. Like that's the silliest fucking thing in the world." But some people are like, you know, need action or need a teaser on one game. It's like that might be the silliest thing I've ever heard in my life. My teasers are usually absolutely degenerate. Like, I did one last week for the first time since week two because everything we've mentioned. So, Homer, who do you think I, I teased down and then the, the Gee, Browns teased up? But it, it was mainly because I already had 100 on, on the Niners, minus five and a half. And I was like, ah, what if they don't cover? So I was like, well, I don't see them losing. <laughs> Yeah, that's good. Okay. You did what the what that's a good teasers. But like Joe said, yeah, our buddy uh, Freck, his cousin, sent me a pic of uh, what he had, and he had like the Rams teased down or something, and then he had he had, he teased he, he saw the total at forty two or forty three, teased it down to like thirty seven and a half, thirty eight. Like Joe said, it lands what twenty two ten. He's like, it's got to go over thirty eight, right? It's got to that these two offenses. So yeah, don't tease. 
totals and if it's too yeah deep, matt and i used to matt we we love doing that four years ago we'd like tease the prime time games and i remember yeah. one looked like a lock and then you know with the under and then somehow two touchdown score in the final minute and i i remember i was in chicago it was the colts on monday night or something or sunday night and we we're just like how the fuck did we lose that and i think that was the last time we ever teased a total Dude, just, yeah, it, and they're doing gens, yeah. They're doing three teamers too, so they're getting ten points. That's yeah. even more of a lock. And I'm like, oh, oh my god! Like, please text me your text me those plays. Don't submit them. I'll take your action. I was gonna say I can think of somebody on this pod who will gladly take that action. So, all right, Jets, um, kind of an ugly dog, but I don't know. Maybe they're they, I mean, they have good pieces on offense. It's just a matter of those guys getting time together and playing together. So, Chris, where are you looking? I'm looking at uh, the team that nobody fucking wants to bet right now. They might be like, they might oh, be no. the second best or worst team against the spread so far. Give me the guy that is fucking Mr. Unlimited, Mr. Actually Limited this far, uh, so far this year. He's dog shit. And they're going against the powerhouse, the team that just went in to Cleveland and won. They looked good the week before against Houston. Oh, my God, how shitty. They keep giving these teams fucking our Denver primetime games, and they look disgusting. They average, what, 12 points a game. They're catching five. That line opened, I think, six and a half. Of course, the contest made it five. Completely dead number. Games never land five. Even if it should, there's a safety typically, so it won't land five. It's that dead of a number. Give me the Broncos. Let's go. Actually, I told Matt last week, games landed one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven, every one of those points. So there's no dead numbers, baby. That's like three or four straight weeks. Neil, we got we got to get in front of him. He keeps taking my pick. Yeah. <laughs> you, guys are, you guys are on poop, on road division poop with me? Fuck. Oh, I've been – yeah. I, I I mean, when – I've been on Broncos. Six and, I, this is, I've been on Broncos every – fucking week and i I promised myself no not for a while and then that line came out at six and a half and i was like well what's one more (laughs) i mean like what you said even at five like going for it so you know fool me once i already did that well i mean if you have more of an analysis for i was just gonna go with that um i might i can do another one that like no it's fine I mean, no, I mean, I, 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 it's pretty much the same reason. I mean, f- I think five points on a Monday night primetime game is, is just way too much. They still have one of the best defenses, you know, there eventually, right? Their offense is going to do something. It's only looked somewhat decent against the Raiders. Um, but, I mean, I don't think they have a defense at all. So, I mean, show us, show us who you actually are, Denver. I mean, everyone's standing idly by waiting. Yeah. Uh, like even even non fans like myself are getting pretty like frustrated just watching this team and and honestly it it's it's a testament of truly how horrible Nathaniel Hackett is he he is tr- that apple truly plugged from his dad Paul I mean as he was he, like he he was amazing. no Matt he, Paul Hackett was the fucking coach which is why um, Petros hates USC well one of the reasons or I guess. He's he's the reason why he's so fond of of that team he was on being one of the worst. That was Paul fucking Hackett. How about this? I'll go I'll go what I never do, and this is because this is a trend, and I, I have to look if it's a dog or not. I think it's just any team facing a divisional foe going in. I text you guys this going into their buy. It's like seventy two percent over the last decade. The Eagles qualify this week. Everyone's super high hurt. I mean, it's a really trendy. It's six. They made it six in the contest. It was four and a half or five. It's been fluctuating. I think it's actually a sharp fade the trendy dog kind of on prime time. I think it might be very appetizing, interesting to see if Den's on it. I'm going to probably lean for the Eagles uh, this week. Chris has an amazing fucking knack of taking both of mine and Kyle's picks. Because at first I thought I I dodged one bullet thinking Matt wasn't going to talk about this game. And then, thanks, Chris. Way to go. Hey, hey we talk about the other one. seven games while we you're let, We gave should you let one. them go first because they went 5-0. and oh. Fuck. <laughs> it's fine. We have to earn it. But, um, I mean, it, it's kind of, you know, Eagles, Neil and I both like that too. And it's funny. My brother-in-law sent us as we were, you know, three minutes ago, Neil, Cowboys, yep. and you instantly go Eagles. Um, 
but you know, not to go into college, but it's the same thing you always say, you know, trust, trust the line. And that's what I did even with the Oklahoma Sooners when it was minus seven. It's just like, why? Okay. <laughs> so, so and, it, it goes and for me, ways. yeah. And for me, and like, like Chris said, the, the trend was nice to sort of back up sort of what I already liked about the Eagles and just thinking that this was the time to get off of Dallas and we can go back, Matt, Matt and I had very similar thought processes around why we liked Dallas last week and they weren't offensive based, right? I don't think we talked about Dallas's offense once last week. We talked about the fact that Matt Stafford is going to be a sitting duck and what happens the very first two Rams drives of the game, you have a fumble for six. And I think it was a number, another fumble that Dallas couldn't move the block ball on punt. and they it, or right the block punt. And then we get a field goal. Dallas gets a field goal out of it. And that's all that was needed in that game, right? Like Dallas's offense did nothing. And so to Cooper Rush, because they've gone on this five game win streak, I think is getting a little too much credit. His stat line's not great, right? This is a guy that passed for 102 yards last game at the end of, you know, against the Rams last game, right? They get to come away with that Dallas, oh, they're so great. Dallas's defense, again, that was the reason why we liked it. This is a completely different type of offense, right? That Dallas is going to face versus just sitting back and, you know, catching a, a sitting duck, right? Like Jalen Hurts is doing stuff, you know, on Lamar and Kyler, but even more effectively so far. So I think in a primetime game, Chris gave the stat 71%. Philly is off of, is going into their buy, right? 71% for teams that are going into their buy, facing a division opponent. They're 71% ATS. It's in Philadelphia. This just seems to me Philly lost both games last year to Dallas. Like this seems to me like this the type of game that that Dallas could just absolutely get spanked. Where I would get nervous, it, it, for me, it's as simple as this. Like you pointed out, Neil, the whole handicap on the Cowboys last week was they lead the league in pressure rate on defense against a, a team that was really offensively struggling on their third center, all kinds of offensive line issues, and they were just going to feast, and they did. This week, that number one pressure rate is going to go up against the best offensive line in the league. So now Philly negates that advantage. Now, I would say this. Philly got a little banged up on the offensive line last week. Kelsey left the game. I think he came back. But you want to check and make sure that O line is healthy and not too banged up, because that would be that would be an advantage if if the offensive line, which is the strength of the Eagles, is a little bit hampered, then that Dallas D line and Parsons and Lawrence can come in and, and maybe wreak some havoc. And I would agree, but don't don't slouch on Philly's defense, right? They are, I think, ranked totally. fourth. Right now in the NFL in total defense, I mean, this is to the same extent of what Dallas's offense is going to be facing this time. Like this is going to be Philly's defense is nothing to to sleep on in this matchup either. And we'll see. What's I up? Think, I think what? this. I think this Dallas is a little overrated. And I don't. I don't know. I like. I know. Right. Cooper Rush is still playing, even though the reports are that Dak's better. I don't think that matters. I don't think that does anything. It's sort of weird that they wouldn't leave him as questionable and they just jumped to Cooper Rush so quickly, but. I'm seeing 68% of the bets on Dallas. Is that close to what you're seeing, Joe? Yep. It's about right. But most of the money on Eagles. So there's a pretty decent differential on the Eagles, the whales, the sharks seem to be. That would make sense. Philadelphia. And that would make, I mean, that would make sense that you have cow. Cowboys are very public team. They're perceived to be riding hot. Sick teaser leg, too. <laughs> yeah, I would have liked the Eagles to lose outright last week. It would have been even better for this, but it's fine. They didn't cover, and uh, the Cowboys had the luckiest. I think they had the luckiest rate last week, you know, in terms of, like we just said, the fumble six and the blocks punt. It's like, I guess they said something. They've simulated the game. The Rams probably win that like 70-something percent of the times if that shit doesn't happen. So. Yeah, a lot of luck there, and uh, but the fans don't really. They just look at the end of the score and the bet that they won last week, and they said, let's ride the, the dog again, baby. Give me the six. You do want to look at contrarian favorites on uh, primetime games sometimes. 
Last time we had a, a big public dog on Monday Night Football was just two weeks ago when San Francisco beat the fuck out of the soft ass Rams. So here we go again. I mean, it's going to be a very public, very popular dog. And it's the Dallas Cowboys of all teams, too. So this is, a, uh, I think, a great spot to look at a contrarian fave in a division game. So really interesting. Matt, uh, I actually, don't. Really, yeah, I have a quick fun fact about the Rams this season. Oh, I, I love it. Get bring it. Yeah, <laughs> they've been outscored by the Bears. Everybody thinks the Bears fucking suck on offense. Well, guess what? Um, <laughs> Bears now they're going to lay double digits. So, what could go wrong? Can anyone touch that game, Rams Panthers? Is uh, are they sitting I mean, Rams? <laughs> Is Baker not dead? Do they say yeah, yeah. Baker's got a high Baker's ankle out. sprain. Mm-hmm. He and Sam Darnold are on the high ankle sprain train. PJ Walker. PJ? Oh, we Ooh. like PJ. I might have to go. I might have to go Panther cock. I dude, I, I'm I'm befuddled by that game, which is why I kind of stayed away. All the all the bets, all the money are all over Panthers. Yeah. And I'm like, fuck. Well, doesn't this just feel like a game where the Rams right. come out and just pull their cock out and win yeah, fucking right thirty-one game. to seven. Right, and I and I think right because the the you the the trend of like team after the coach gets fired has been has become pretty mainstream now, right? Like that's become yeah. a pretty popular trend to be like, okay, coach got fired, let's rally up and let's go. So it does seem I could see why like percentage of bets are are leaning. Carolina, because I think people are just defaulting that one, but it feels like something where it's like, and then yeah, why the fuck the, the line opens seven and a half? Everybody bets on Carolina, all the money's on Carolina, and then now now the line's ten and a half. What the fuck's going on here? It it doesn't make any sense. I think Vegas, it's a, it's just one of those bait lines. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. But I, it's Isn't not strong that... enough for me to. I'm not. I just can't get behind that. That uh, wash D line, D, obviously, the, their D line's not Cowboys, but isn't their D line pretty, pretty good? It's Dees. Mm-hmm. It, it really is. I mean, it, it, their issues have been that their offense can do nothing, and so that defense is just can't run the ball the entire game. Yeah, they can't do anything. So, no, they do have some some pieces on defense. Um, Actually, they are sixth in sacks in the NFL. So, and that's not against not Jimmy G. Trouble. Yeah, I mean it's just it, it's so ugly. I mean it's like how how can you take the Panthers ever, and then how can you lay double digits with the Rams? So you got to have some serious conviction to to play this game either way. We also need to touch on the Bills Chiefs game. Uh, I, I don't think our preview would be complete without at least acknowledging that. Anybody considering either side of that contest wise? Anybody like either side of that bet wise? Yeah, I'm interested to hear your guys' opinion. I've heard a few different ones throughout the week, and I'd, uh, I, I lean Chiefs. I don't. I've heard uh, we have a guy on Twitter. He he DMs me a lot, and he said something about he thinks is a great revenge spot for the Bills because of the 12 second game in the playoffs and. He thinks they go in and mop the floor with him. And he's a pretty poopy better like me, our boy Joey Cheese. And, like, he, this is a, a for sure play for him. And I was just shocked that even though he said the look ahead was Chiefs minus one, now it's plus three. That's a four-point swing. That's just – he thinks it's – what do you guys think? Do you guys think that it's going to be that easy for the Bills to go in there? I agree with Joey. Um, I like the revenge spot. Chiefs off of one day, last rest. Rest. Um Plus, uh, most of the bets and money are on the Chiefs. They just everybody saw them win on Monday night. Like, I think the Raiders win that game outright if all this bullshit doesn't happen. But you know, Buffalo's gone in there and played well. Why not one more time at uh, one p.m. Pacific time? Why the fuck is this not a primetime game? Is my question. Cowboy cock. Jesus That's why. Christ. Wow. And then That's I don't horrible. think they can move Mondays. Flex, but, flex yeah. the Broncos out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they can't yeah, flex them to Monday. Hilarious. You can't flex Mondays. Otherwise, I'm yeah, sure the not, NFL wants to. 
but it, come on, this is shame on the NFL. Like, it's not like you didn't. Know. We knew that these teams were playing. We knew that this yeah. was going to be the game of the year. Yeah, there's no bigger there's no bigger regular season game this year than Bills Chiefs. Correct. Right? Shame on NFL. This should either be Monday night or it should have been Sunday night, and you push, you know, Cowboys to Monday night. Like, yeah, it's I can't under can't yeah. fathom why it is the way it is. Yeah, that's that's bad. Uh, over, right, Chris? Simply no way it doesn't go over. Has to fly. Both Maybe. have top 10 defenses. What is yeah, that? I don't I think know. 54? <clears throat> it's so. 54, and it has not gotten higher than that. It's kind of ping ponged between 53 and a half and 54. So, Joe, you're saying a lot of the money and the bets are actually on the Chiefs? Yep. Yeah. Why not? Like what percent? Like sixty or something? I just fucking said it, but uh, sixty-six and seventy. Sixty-six and seventy. So yeah, um, why not, dude? It's Chiefs. Patrick Mahomes getting points. Why the fuck don't you bet that? Right? That's easy. That's an easy bet. Yeah, I I thought they kind of looked like shit. I mean, they're down seventeen nothing to the Raiders. I would have loved the Raiders to gas pedal that shit. I can't believe that pussy of a coach kicked that fourth and one i just kept saying gas pedal these fuckers 17 nothing is nothing against and he kicks it and sure enough it's a, a sweat and they probably should have lost uh, even by more um but they got lucky i don't know i so i don't know what they're and then everyone sees them absolutely dismantled they probably don't doesn't you know not much merit behind beating fucking picket and the uh steelers but yeah I just don't know. I, 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 a lot of narratives here in this game. We talked about this on our uh, recap on Sunday night when we looked ahead to this one. It did touch three at the Superbook. It got to three minus 120, and then it went right back down to two and a half. So I thought that was it. We said, does it touch three? And we said, like, ah, probably not. But it did just for a like just a quick second. So that is going to be a fascinating game. Curious if anybody goes with that. A um, couple other ones Real here. quick, Matt. Yeah. Can I just uh, – Joe, let's update because I said I was going to double yug if Tampa Bay didn't get at least 72.5% of the bets on our look-ahead pod. Uh, let's talk against Tampa. Pittsburgh. Against what? Pittsburgh. What's Tampa Bay? I mean, this is – no percentage of bets, not money. But I said seventy four percent of bets on Tampa. <laughs> All right. I'm still, Were you gonna I'm still double yug right now? No, no, right now. I because I said okay. by Friday. I said okay. by Friday. I couldn't remember. remember. I said come Friday, I double yug if it, if they had less than seventy two and a half percent of the, wow. the bets on on Tampa Bay. So seventy four. That I no way that number is going down. If it's already there on Wednesday, I don't think. Yeah, no. I mean, who in the who in the right mind is taking Pickett and the Steelers, right? Probably just Chris. Nobody. Chris, Chris isn't him. even. Chris didn't even raise his hand. Holy shit, that's disgusting. Man. <laughs> the one, the other one that stands out for me, and we'll wrap this one up soon, is the Bengals are getting eighty four percent of bets. That's extremely high, and it is it free money. Bengals under a touchdown. No way. Against Not with that defense. Well, what they can what they can do to Burrow as well as their safeties against all their receivers. Like uh, we were just texting in the group, and I'm like, I lean Saints, I, I, but I, I don't think I can play it just because of the danger. Like I don't. I, but yeah. but Kmart, the Saints allowed 35 points to Seattle last week. Doesn't matter. Yeah, it came out. Did you there's not outliers, man. Game? There's outliers, man. It's 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 the same reason in the Olympics why they take out the high and the low scores. Like you can't just not every game's weighted equally. I, My list to Brett Favre, aka Freck, did have Saints and Steelers on it, so I am thinking about some poopy ass shit. But of they were also tired from London the week before. Would be my reasoning for yeah. that outlier. Yeah, that's it's really hard to know. I mean, the two teams we saw come back from London last week without the bye were the Saints and the Vikings. And the Vikings defensively kind of 
allowed a lot to a really previously inept yeah. offense in Fields Chicago. Fields looked good so, for the first time in all season. Oh, that was second maybe. half, so maybe second half fatigue. <clears throat> maybe there, and that's when Seattle was lighting up the scoreboard mm-hmm. against New Orleans. So maybe there is something to that. That I mean, that's a weird variable. T- teams typically have buys fall in London this year, at least early in the season. They have not. So watch for that on uh, Green Bay and on the Giants. How about second half team totals for their opponents? That could be kind of hot. I like that angle. That could be really interesting. It could be a Dennis play, but that's fine. Yeah, that's Dennis fine. wins he, too. He, he wins now, so yeah, he he figured it out. <laughs> <laughs> Cracked the code, so to speak. Um, okay, before we get out of here, I need to know the public bet percentage on USC. I know this is an NFL pod, but I need to know. It's like sixty-five percent. Think that's yeah. it. Dan is on Marshall minus wow. six minus ten. It's three nothing raging Cajuns at the SC, end of the sixty five percent. Wow, I'm surprised. I thought it was going to be over it's seventy. Not as bad. Sure. Like it's it, it was like on Monday, but it's kind of coming back to f- like fifty fifty. Um, so Tennessee is way more square. Oh, Tennessee's it's I don't. I was going to talk about that on tomorrow's. College yeah, pod. You guys should, I think Chris yeah. is going to point, Joe. I, I don't think he cares yeah. about college. But. I'll do. Uh, I'll talk about it again tomorrow. But if he's not on Clemson, I'll do a yug, yug shot, yug combination. Dude, that, that like that line funny. is crazy too. Like I, <laughs> Joe leaves. He's like, I'm not, not listening yeah, to Joe's college. Out of college. All right. But yeah, we'll, no, we'll see, hit that see up for tomorrow, tomorrow guys. Yeah. So listen, listen for uh, two dads ball, or I guess tomorrow's going to be two dads in a hazmat suit. Yeah, two dads and a cripple. <laughs> two dads and a boot. Yep, there it is. All right, a uh, lot of NFL games we didn't get to, but everybody's going to tweet out their cut. Well, somebody, somebody, Chris, maybe you, just draw a picture of what you want the fucking graphic to look like. Send it to me. Like you're in kindergarten, just draw it out. Tell me what you want it to look like. I'll make like it. Bo- like with the boxes and stuff? I don't, yeah. Just let me know what to make and I'll, I'll do it. Okay. All right. Keep an eye out for everybody's plays on the Twitter. I know uh, everybody's been doing a good job of, of blasting those out. And uh, hopefully the dads keep it going. Week six, let's all go over 500 again and, and keep this thing going and stay within striking distance. So Chris, get us out of here with this. What happens sometimes when you bet on poop? You might end up like the Carolina Panthers, throwing pick sixes and losing by lots of puntos. But stay strong, folks. Poop wins too. Go Niners.